<laughs> or we'll watch that instead of this. There you go. So how is your mom? She's just almost 90. was here for four days and he got to see it firsthand. Her long-term memory is fine. Her short-term memory is She can't hear for five minutes. She can't remember. Um, I shouldn't say anything because I probably can't. <laughs> I appreciate the, the thank you and the message. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. They did a lot of work. I don't want to say it was so-and-so and so-and-so. Sure. Uh, yeah. We'll give her another hug for me. I meant to get back there again, but then Heather's friend came. Yeah. And you knew I was talking about you two weeks ago when we did my walk and talk, right? That was for you. It was past two weeks. All of us. All of us. I wrote that whole thing in 30 minutes when I was dead sick in my pajamas, barely getting out of bed Saturday night. So I remember getting up and doing it. I don't remember doing it. You go home and look back to bed. God, you're so sorry. You did a good job. Thank you.
Today. Today. Today is a day. Today is a day that the Lord has made. Now say it like you mean it. Today. Today is a day. Today is a day that the Lord has made. Today is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice. And be glad. And be glad. And be glad. Wonderful. Okay, so what can't wait? Oh, last, last week, thank you. <laughs> last week was what can't wait now? Peace. Hope, thank you. All right, and what can't wait? Hope. And what can't wait? Peace. Worship. And what can't wait? Worship. Thank you. Okay, now we're ready to go. We can't wait anymore. It's time to worship. And so we begin with our call to worship. And so let us look at these words as we begin this morning. What can't wait? Hope for a better day. What can wait? Peace and forgiveness among us and with us. What can wait? Joy and delight our cup runs over. What can't wait? Love for self, love for neighbor, love for creator, and love for creation. Prepare the way. That calls all the light of hand. Prepare the way. Open the doors. Prepare the way. Make space in our hearts for the new kind of love. Christ is coming. Prepare the way. God is waiting and God is ready. Starting here and now, let us worship holy God. Amen. Amen. Let us turn to God in a prayer of confession. Let us pray. Creator God, not a day goes by when we do not invite us to be peacemakers and advocates, listeners as good Samaritans. Not a day goes by when we are not asked to be a friend, a stranger, and a neighbor to those in need. Not a day goes by when we are not asked to be people you call us to be, and yet, day after day, we lose sight of your hope for this world. Forgive us for walking a different path, and grant us the strength to prepare a new way, your way here. Gratefully we pray. Amen. People of God. A new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we together will sing our gathering song. I hope you the praising is Emmanuel. I will wait for you to be confident. 
I will wait for my child to walk. I will wait for the leaves to change. I will wait for the dust to settle. I will wait for the lab results. I will wait for Christmas to arrive. I will wait for a lot of things, but I will not wait for peace. This world is rampant with division, walls, grudge holding, and self-doubt. I do not want to be a passive bystander in this division. We do not want to be passive bystanders in this division. So today we light the candle of peace as a reminder that we have a role to play. May the desire to sow peace kindle in us like a light in the darkness. Amen. Thank you. Now we continue with our Advent Viking uh, song, which is Come to Us Emmanuel, and we'll be singing verses 4, 5, and 6 today. And the chorus will begin with that today. <laughs>
very much. And uh, let me light the second candle also. The first candle is a prophecy candle, and the second one is a Bethlehem candle as we continue to move toward um, Christmas. And we have our banner over here. And so let me see what we've got here. Let's see, we started last week, and I just put the number one on there just because we needed number one on there. And uh, so let's see. Today is... Okay. That's much better. Thank you. Okay. Today is what? December the what? Fourth. Thank you. These sheep are causing trouble in my little box here. They're jumping all over the place. So, okay. So after number one comes... I didn't think it was that hard of a question. <laughs> after number one comes... Two. Okay, that's better. Okay. And two is a... Star. Thank you. Okay, all right. And then after number two comes... Three. Okay, this is... Carolyn, I think we need a teacher out here. Really. I, don't, I don't know if I can do this. Okay, after number two comes... Three. three. Okay. And three is a... Palm tree. Is a palm tree. Thank you. I heard right? someone say it. I'll go with that one. After three comes four. And today is the fourth. Very good. So do we stop there then? No. no. <laughs> Not entirely. This is a rough crowd today. Oh my gosh. Today's the fourth, so we stop at four. So um, palm trees or whatever kind of trees they want to get, whatever you want them to be. They could be uh, pomegranate trees or apple trees. Whatever trees you want, it's, it's your choice anyway. So as you see, we're moving toward Christmas and um, we just continue each every day as we uh, take pauses and breaths and focus in on the gift that we are to receive. And so it's good that you're here this morning. Let us continue with the word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you uh, as we continue in the season of Advent of the lighting of the second candle, the Bethlehem candle, it reminds us that nothing was prepared for Jesus in Bethlehem. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds to receive Christ each and every day, because you give us that gift of life. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, our introduction to our lessons for today is the first verse of uh, Away in Rage. Shall put its hands on the outer skin. 
They will not hurt or destroy on any or on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord and the waters that cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we welcome the gospel this morning, let us proclaim that with our gospel acclamation. Alleluia! Prepare the way of the Lord. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all of Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by John in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when John saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestors. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor and gather his feet into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquestionable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Uh, this morning again, I want to show you the two two pictures that we're going to be focusing in on Wednesday. Um, the first one is, is uh, an artist's rendition of Isaiah there, the child shall lead him. And the second one is, uh, is a kind of an interesting picture. There's a lot going on there. Uh, but on Wednesday, we're going to talk about that. That's uh, an artist's rendering of John the Baptist. And so as we enter into God's Word for today, we'll just remember that and have an image in our mind. And so as we prepare for our lessons and our sermon for today, let us sing the fourth verse of a little town of Bethlehem. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Talks about turning around. 
And I have this, this notion of, a, of physically turning around. I know that I shared this story, and I'm going to share it again, whether you heard it or not. And if you heard it again, you get to hear it again. That's okay. Is that uh, every year we would do what was called the Great Aloha Run. It was from downtown Honolulu to Aloha Stadium. It's all about eight miles. We did not run it. We walked it. And as you're coming into Aloha Stadium there, almost near the end of the walkway, there's, there's all these people there, and they're religious people, and they have this big banner that says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is coming. And I wanted to walk up there and tell them, I'm not repenting right here, right now, because that means I've got to turn around and go back the other way. And I'm not doing that. And sometimes that's the way we focus on this word repent. There's a physical movement. But the word there in Greek for repent is metanoia, which means a changing of the mind. Not a physical, but it's more of a mind changing there. It also means a transformation change of heart. Now that is very different from the notion that I had of repenting. So it has to do with your heart, it has to do with your mind, and it means that there's a transformation, transformative change of that. And so John tells the people what this change of heart might mean. The first thing that he talks about, and some of the very quick words are there, is that he looks at the people, and it's mostly the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he says, do not presume. Do not presume that you're just children of Abraham and you can do whatever you want to. Do not presume. Isn't that a good thing to remember? And maybe change our hearts and our minds a little bit around that? Because we assume and presume all kinds of things. Sometimes we look at people and people say this is small. Well, all those people are this way. Or they know it all. Or sometimes we think that we know it all. We presume to know what is best for other people. Isn't that interesting that we do that? Especially when it comes to people that don't have shelter and don't have houses, and we call them homeless. We presume to know exactly what they need and what is best for them without even talking to them. If they would just do this, right? We presume to know exactly what they do. We assume that we have the answers to the questions there. And so John the Baptist comes in and says, change your heart, change your mind a little bit. Do not presume. Do not assume things. Do not assume that you know better than other people because everyone is in the same lot. You might find yourself on the street because you've lost a couple of paychecks. And so don't presume. The second thing that John says here as he's talking about all these things is to bear fruit. That's right, those wonderful trees that we put on the <laughs> calendar there. To bear fruit. To bear fruit that shows the change of heart. I heard one time, and I could hear John the Baptist saying this, I, you know, but I heard one time a person asked this question. If you were on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Did you follow that? If you were on trial of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Would they look at you and say, yes, they are a Christian because this and this and this and this? Or would they say, well, I'm not sure. We didn't really see anything that shows that they're a Christian. Bear fruit. These are the words that John is sharing here is do not presume and to bear fruit. Those all have to do with repentance there. Now to understand John's message fully, we have to talk about where John is at. John's location. To understand what's happening in this text, we really have to fully understand it. So John is in the wilderness of the Jordan River. So John's in the wilderness of the Jordan River, and what is the wilderness. Well, the wilderness for the people of that time was a place of actually spiritual renewal. Jesus went to the wilderness for 40 days and was tempted by the devil, but it was for spiritual renewal. That's why John the Baptist was out there. He was part of a community called the Essenes, and they decided to leave the temple and all of the trappings of the religious world up in Jerusalem and to go out and to find God in the desert or the wilderness. 
It's in the emptiness that we rely fully on God. Wilderness. What is your wilderness? And where is your wilderness? Where are the spots that you need to find God in your life today? Where are you dry? Where is your dry, lifeless spots of life? Where is a place that you find the greatest need of God in the depths of your heart? Where is that place? It might be in your own mind or in your heart there. That's the wilderness. And that's where God will find you. There in the wilderness. So John is out in the wilderness. That's where he's located. And people are coming from all over, it says there. And so now we focus in on John's audience. Who is there listening to John? Well, we know there's a lot of people there, but John focuses in on the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And this is again to remind us is that John is in a place that is close, much closer to Jerusalem than in Galilee. And that's where God put John. He's closer to the religious leaders. And so we have this picture that John is talking to the people who might feel on the outside. The outsiders is who John is talking to, as opposed to the people on the inside. John's message is really to those people on the inside. And why is that? Well, because he put the people on the outside out in the wilderness. They were pushed out. They were presumed to be of no good. Or they were presumed that if they would just do all the sacrifices, they would do all these things, then God would love them. You see, the outsiders were clamoring to hear Jesus. Up in Galilee, people were flocking to him by the thousands when he started to speak. To hear that God loved them because they felt like they were on the outside. But Jesus included them. They felt like the stump of Jesse that we hear about in Isaiah today. Cut off. No life. They felt like they were cut off from God. So John is calling for the hard work of being transformed. And since John was calling for the hard work of being transformed, guess what happened? We know that he was beheaded because of his call to transform your heart and mind. And the political leaders of that time didn't want to hear it. Jesus was about trying to transform people's hearts and minds. And Jesus was crucified. It's hard work to transform our own minds and our own hearts. And it's hard work to help others to transform their hearts and their minds because we presume to know, we assume to know what is right and what is wrong. And often we're very wrong about what is right. As I was thinking about this, a uh, person came to mind, and that was uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu. And a picture of his book there, it's a wonderful book, um, I forgot the title of it, is No Future Without Forgiveness. If you show the other picture, I just want to let you know that about 10 years ago, I had the opportunity at the Episcopal Cathedral in, in Honolulu there, is to meet Bishop Desmond Tutu. And yes, I'm taller than him. Did you see that? Few people are taller than him. It's so, it was so much fun to meet him because his last name is Tutu, and in Hawaiian that means grandmother. And I said to him, I said, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times when he's there, and I said, I said, so you're my grandmother. He just thought of it, I guess so. <laughs> but Bishop Desmond Tutu, in 1995, was named the head of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which investigated allegations of human rights abuse during the apartheid era. And he decided that the only way to do this was to have everyone gathered together. So there in South Africa, he would go from community to community, and he would have everyone there. The tension in the room, he said, was just unbelievable. Because you had people on both sides. You had the, the abusers and the abused. And he said, that's the only way that we could achieve peace and reconciliation. This is what he says. He says, forgiving and being reconciled 
are not about pretending that the things are other than what they are. It's not patting ourselves on the back and turning a blind eye to the wrong. True reconciliation exposes the awfulness, the abuse, the pain, the denigration, the truth. It can sometimes make matters even worse. It's a risky undertaking, but in the end it is worthwhile. Because in the end, dealing with the real situation helps to bring real healing. Spurious recon reconciliation can only bring spiritual healing, which means false reconciliation can only bring false healing. It's hard work. And in the book there, he just describes how, especially the people that were the abused ones, is how hard it was for them to even talk about it. But after a while, they did. And those who were the abusers could also share stories. And he says, only in that, that very tough, tough work is that could people start on the road to reconciliation and peace. He spoke of the hard work of transformation. It takes a change of heart. And God is in the business of transforming hearts. And that leads us today to Isaiah and the stump of Jesse. A stump usually represents the end of life for a tree. But with God, it's only a beginning. An example of that in our own lives, when we lived out in Palm Desert, um, a frost came through one, one night um, while we're out in the desert, and it killed two of our trees. Um, they were uh, like pepper trees or something. And I said, you know, they were drop tolerant, but they could not stand the cold. And I remember cutting that down, and I cut it down, and lo and behold, I was, well, I guess I'll dig it up someday. But what happened with that tree was, is it started going out this way. The stump was there, but it grew out this way. And suddenly, the people that bought the house after us now had a wonderful pepper tree bush rather than a tree, and now it's huge. God has a way of working with stumps. Because as it says there in Isaiah, is the shoot comes forward out of the stump. I found that wonderful picture there, what that might look like. And it describes, Isaiah describes the coming Messiah, Jesus. It looks like all is cut off. It looks like all is dead. That's what the people of Galilee felt like. They felt like they were cut off. But there's life there. And so I want to take a closer look at verse 3 here for a second. Because what it tells us in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3 is, the Messiah will not judge by what the eye sees and will not decide by what the ears hear. Not by what we see and not by what we hear. So the question is, is what is left? If it's nothing that we... I'm not going to decide by what we see or what we hear, which is usually what we go by. Unfortunately, these days, it's people go by what they hear. Well, I heard on TV. Well, I, I saw it on the internet. So what's left? It's the eye of the heart. That's what's left. What is left is the eye of the heart and seen with the eye of the heart. That's the way to peace. We've said that song before. Is open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. But imagine if we looked at people through the eye of our heart instead of our mind or our ears, what we hear, what we see. But we look deeper than that because Jesus looked deeper than that. It almost had the sense that Jesus, when he looked at someone, he looked right through them with the eyes of his heart into their heart. When we open up the eyes of our hearts, we can see and we can experience God's dream. And God's dream is shown very, very clearly for us in Isaiah there. It's called the peaceable kingdom. The wolf, the lamb, the leopard, the kid, the calf, the lion, 
the cow, and the bear. It says the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord and there will be peace. That's God's dream. God's dream is peace. And this dream was to be ushered in with the Prince of Peace, Jesus. We read it in Philippians chapter 4, 7. Paul says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Surpasses all understanding. You see, the peaceable kingdom is only seen and felt by the eyes of our heart because it's beyond our understanding. We cannot understand how a lion can lay down with a lamb. It doesn't make any sense. But through the eyes of our heart, that which doesn't make any sense is what God is calling for, calling for peace. Because the change of heart, the transformation of hearts and minds will lead to peace. What can't wait? Peace. peace. What can't wait? Peace. peace. What can't wait? Peace. Peace. Let's put that together with last week. Two words, see if you get it. What can't wait? Hope, Hope and peace. peace. What can't wait? Hope, Hope and peace. peace. Because God's dream is alive and it lives with us. Now may the peace of God be with you. Because God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Let us sing together our sermon hymn, which is Awake, Awake, and Greet to Do More.
weeks, I invite you to stand as you are able so that we may proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we talked about peace this morning, now we're going to take a moment of peace and to pray for peace. Uh, when there's violence around, all around the world, even in our own communities, as we have a moment of silence for peace and praying for victims of violence, and also here in the Ukrainian prayer once again.
Sorry, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Uh, as we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. May we pray. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, inspired teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give us vision of creation and harmony. When hurting and deconstruction will be no more, teach us to be stewards of the earth and compassionate to their creatures. Restore to balance the wholeness what humans greed has harm. God, in your mercy. Amen. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up the leaders who govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy. Amen. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy. You urge your people to welcome one another as you welcome us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in oh wait, hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from their loved ones. God, in your mercy. You embrace all who have died trusting in your promises. And we give thanks for the faithfulness, witness, for their faithful witness to sustain us in hope until we are all united with them in the joy of eternal presence. God, in your mercy. And Lord God, we thank you for your peaceful presence with us each and every day. And today, Lord, we lift up the prayer of Carl Bratz and for his family um, as his sister Paula um, is spending her few last hours here on earth before going into eternal life. And so we pray that you surround Carl and his family as they go to her bedside, as they have those last moments with her. We pray that peace and comfort may be with them and continue to be with them. God, in your mercy. And Lord of healing and comfort, we continue to pray for others who need you in a special way. Today we lift up and pray for Sandy and Frida, Marion, Larry, Harriet, Don, Connie, Grace, Barbara, John and Jan, Lois, Carol, Ernest and June, Janet, Don and Janet, Naomi, Jean, and also we mention in our hearts at this time. As we lift up and pray for these, we continue to pray for their family members, for their caregivers, for medical teams, doctors and nurses and others and therapists who continue to work with these your people. They may be the hands of healing for these people. And Lord, we thank you for the promise that you'll never leave us or abandon us, and that we thank you for your presence with these your people. God, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of life and a celebration today, we pray for these who are celebrating their birthdays. We pray for Ann Flavor, John Jean Turnbull, Carl Rotz, and Mary Ann Handorf. Lord God, continue to shine the light of your joy upon their pathway. God in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all of your children. As we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to stand as you're able and share the peace of God and that which you're comfortable with. Share God's peace with those around.
get me started. I want to go punch my neighbors in the neck. Well, you know what? I've been thinking of you. Thank you. Peace be with you. I should ask you more often. Continue on the teachings of temptation. 
So you sent Jesus to us, your word which will never fade, whose hearts are strong in holiness, with those who long for justice for our people, we offer our songs of thanksgiving. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. As we set out on our Advent journey, as we seek to walk the way to Bethlehem, we remember that mystery that we call faith. Christ died, the branch broken on the unjust tree. Christ was raised, declaring the Lord is my resurrection. Christ will return, the advent of God's glory and grace for all. Come now to your children, gathered at this table, pouring out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and the cup. This is the bread which, though broken, strengthened us to stand for justice. This is a cup which overflows with grace, so that we might transform our communities into safe places for all people. So that we might see our sisters and brothers in whose world would have us fear. And when we raise our heads to see our redemption draws near at the end of time, we join with your sisters and brothers in singing your praises forever and ever. God and community, holy in one. Amen. Let us now sing together with the Lord's Prayer. Thank you.
Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer after communion. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by your holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the eternal God, who dwells within us in Jesus, and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah, is Daniel going to? Okay. Heather was just telling me that she had a double ear infection, and she her voice is not the best, and that's why she's not up here. And I said, I told her, I said, well, both ears got infected. I said, this is a day that you thank God you don't have three ears. <laughs> so, the blessing there. So, thank you for bringing the announcements for us. All right, so uh, upcoming announcements for this week. Uh, on today, after... Um, after the service, we're going to have a Bible study in the boardroom at 1015. And then at 2 o'clock this afternoon, it looks like there is a Lighthouse Theater nativity story. So that would be kind of fun to come and check out. On Wednesday at 10, the choir is rehearsing. And also on Wednesday at 11, there's a daily disciple Bible study in the fireside room. On Thursday at 930 in the morning, the uh, Dorcas Lida Circle uh, meets in the boardroom. Lydia. <laughs> Dorcas Lydia Circle. Um, Saturday at 3.30 in the afternoon, there is Christmas caroling. Well, that's fine. Are we going to go like, on a, like a hay or something or not? <laughs> if you bring the trailer. <laughs> um, and then uh, next Saturday at 6, we're having a uh, Christmas party at Ordinary Exchange. All right, so that should be cool. And then next week, same thing. We meet at 9 o'clock for worship and we'll do it again. So the upcoming event, December 13th, Men's Bible Study. December 13th, we have a church council meeting. December 18th, we have. Okay, we don't care about any of that stuff. All right, so you can watch the stuff in your bulletin. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Daniel. Let's give my hand for just jumping up there and teaching you. I love that with the little comments saying, Oh, Christmas Carol, that sounds fun. <laughs> and it will be. Okay, so you can um, I'm here in the back of the church because we have the blessing of the nativity seats here. And thank you for bringing it. And if you still would like to bring it, we could probably have them here for a couple weeks before Christmas or something. We'd still like to do that. Still invite you to do that. Um, during, um, if you go to the next screen here, I think we've got a couple different just responses here. I'm sorry, we're ready for that right now. That's okay. Okay. All right. So during the Psalm 89, the response is, Forever I was saying the goodness of the Lord. And the second response is from the prayers. Uh, Come, Lord, dwell with us. Okay. So we do begin this uh, blessing of the nativity scenes in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ, who dwells among us now and forever. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, we pause to bless these Christmas nativity scenes. The practice of erecting such nativities was begun by St. Francis of Assisi as a means to set forth the message of Christmas. When we look upon these figures, the Christmas gospel comes alive and we are moved to rejoice in the mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God. And so our response is Psalm, Psalm 89. And your response again is, Forever I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Psalm 89. I made a covenant with my chosen one. I swore to David, my servant, forever I will proclaim, confirm your posterity, and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Happy the people of those who joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. And at your name they rejoice all the day. And through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. He said of me, you are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. 
Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Let us ask for God's blessings on these Christmas nativities and upon ourselves, that we may reflect on the birth of Jesus, may share in salvation be accomplished. Again, the response of the prayers is, Come, Lord, to help with us. For the Church of God, as we recall the circumstances surrounding the birth of Christ, that we may always proclaim His gift of new life for all people, we pray to the Lord, Come, Lord, dwell with us. For the world in which we live, that it may come to recognize Christ, who greeted by the angels and the shepherds, we pray to the Lord, Come, Lord, dwell with us. For our families and our homes, that Christ was laid in the manger, may dwell within us always, we pray to the Lord, Come, Lord, dwell with us. For parents, for their loved children, that they may be modeled that of Mary and Joseph, we pray to the Lord, Come, Lord, dwell with us. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you may manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of Mary. To our lives, he brings joy, peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon these activities. May they be reminded of the humble birth of Christ and raise our thoughts to him, who is God with us and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Christ our God enlighten our hearts and minds now and forever. Amen. Amen. We have another announcement. We do have another announcement. Okay. We want to thank all the families that help donate flowers every week. The altar flowers for today are presented by Lauren and Joanna Larson. Thanks for God. Thanks be to God for the arrival of our first great grandchild, Quinn Elsie Larson, I believe. Is that correct? And she was born 11-11-2022. And the Lara and Lewis family, thankfulness for rainbows, love, dreams, and God's eternal promises. Thank, Thank you. you. I urge you to stand as we sing our closing song for this morning. Sunday song this morning, Go in Peace and Serve the Lord. Please stand as you're able. <laughs> Yes.